Hello and welcome to the Disc Golf Pro Tour on Jomez Pro. You are watching the final round from the Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. Big sexy commentary here with you. You're looking at Vista del Camino Park with Nate Sexton and Jeremy Colling. We have got obviously just an incredible lineup here on one of the best weekends ever. Grip six, low profile, Eagle McMahon leading the way. And circle two percentage is blowing the field away as well as birdie percentage. You're gonna be in first place if you can be first in both of those. But look at Calvin. He is also first in fairway hits and circle two in regulation. He's getting himself a lot of opportunities. Drew, obviously he's already had two rounds on film and he has just been put on, putting on a show, a mixed bag this year. He's out here to deliver a statement. And Macbeth, the warrior, the guy who is known as being the tiger of Sunday comebacks. If he can, I just hope we can play this close to the same rounds I did yesterday. I mean, if I make those two butts in the circle, it's a 13 under. I feel like that. I feel like whoever wins today is going to shoot 10 or better. So if I just play close to the same round I did yesterday, it should give me a chance to win the tournament. Uh, hopefully, be a little better off the tee, uh, give myself some closer putts, but. Same game plan pretty much. Um, it's a little windier today, so maybe you don't have to score as well, but regardless, someone's gonna shoot hot on the card and that person will probably take home the W. I'm just going to play one L at a time, basically go out there and be a walking cliche. I think the biggest adjustments I need to make is, is off the tee. Um, I wasn't in the circle too often uh, to convert birdies, so I really need to step that up today. And, and when I do have those outside the circle putts, I need to convert them as well, so. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of sloppiness yesterday, so I need to clean that up, and I think those are the two biggest factors. Yeah, stepping up to 18 with Emerson was, uh, I knew I needed to birdie it, um, at least make the mandatory to put some pressure on him, and that was really the first moment where I'm like, I need this shot. So uh, I was able to convert that, and I didn't make the birdie, but I was still able to jump on the lead card, and I think, I think being on the lead card kind of puts a little bit more pressure on the other players, uh, because if I'm making a comeback, they see it right there in front of them rather than on U disc and who knows if they're even checking that. So being able to stay on lead card, I think is a big factor. A walking cliche. He's a walking stick cliche. That is a man who is dangerous on this course, especially with the lead. Hole one, short, sweet, triple mandatory. Yeah, but still tricky with that elevated basket. And you've got a couple trees that could kind of bother the players right around the mandatory. Some of those branches sticking into the line. I expect to see some mid ranges, though. Nice crowd on hand today, and they're definitely excited for the show they're about to see. Why wouldn't there be? The temperature is perfect. Lint, the wind is low. It is a spectacular day to witness some great disc golf. And Eagle's going with a glow MD3 and kicks early, and he'll have to throw an approach on the first hole that's averaging 2.84, and that's with the top half of the field. Wow, and I, I mentioned those trees just for something to say to fill time, but I honestly didn't think anyone was going to come in contact with those, but you see they are really a factor. You get a little bit off on your line, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden your shot is blown up. Calvin going with the Luster Rock 3. We're going to make some corrections from our calls. A little bit of guesswork yesterday on the disc choices. We got some facts today to share, and that's a Luster Rock 3, and Calvin with the wide open door opportunity oh. on the shank from Eagle. He throws a shank himself, and that'll be a couple of threes more than likely. It is definitely a little windier. Yeah. From Carmichael, California, it is Drew Gibson. And much in the way that the first round of Fountain was dead calm, the second round had a little bit of wind. Yesterday was dead calm out here at Vista, and now we've got a little bit more wind to speak of. It definitely is going to make a difference on some of these holes. Looks pretty calm right now, however, and Drew is throwing the buzz. Low fat, low mid range, drilling it into the ground there. You're going to see a lot of the slide work here on this course. The ground is low, the grass is low cut, the ground is hard. Great shot there.
all also electing to throw a buzz. And that's coming up short, but that's gonna slide quite a bit. Maybe doing a little bit of, taking another guesswork out, watching Drew's approach slide a little bit long. Yeah, I thought he might have turned it over a little too much and mm -hmm. not wasn't gonna get that slide, but it turns out it was just perfect. The eagle just laying up as he should from that distance there. Calvin may have an opportunity to give this a little bit of a run. And he's 60 feet out. He is going to run it and almost Ooh. connects with a huge putt. Calvin's putting was a little flat in round three after some stellar putting over at the fountain. Macbeth is high and he is in. That's a good starting putt for the round. Solid birdie to pick up, especially after the two leaders. We're going to suffer a par. And Drew's in with the challenger. And, you know, that's exactly what we want to see from a drama perspective. The two guys chasing, mm -hmm. closing the gap right away on one of the easier holes. Not exactly what you might expect to see, but get a couple more horses in this race, and this thing's going to get really exciting. Well, I mean, yeah, Drew's not really chasing much. He's not tied no. for second place. He's no. one stroke back. I mean, yeah. anything can happen, as you know. You're right for sure. Hole two, par three, 369 feet. This one has a couple trees late and that out of bounds on the right that really shouldn't come into play, but we saw it come into play in a big way in round three. So these guys may throw that low backhand trying to hyzer in behind the trees or there's an open forehand line. Definition of insanity is doing the same thing multiple times and expecting different results. I don't think we're gonna see the same thing from Paul McBeth when he steps up to this tee, because he ain't crazy. No. He's crazy good. Yeah. Drew says, throws this thing so soft and still getting all the way there. And that is, that is a recluse, and it's real close. Beth has gone with the disc change. He is going with a Raptor here. And that is wide and that should get a nice scoot and filter down. Oh yeah, that's just, slow down, slow down. Nice shot. Just around that back tree. Those Raptors have nice claws. They really like to dig into the earth when they get near the pin sometimes, it seems like when he's throwing it. It's a good feature. Eagle's gonna show us that forehand flex. Yeah. It's a little perfect. <laughs> Pretty high, but yeah, yeah, it's fighting forward yeah. beautifully. I didn't quite think he had enough turn on it, but it, I mean, as soon as we got around the tree, it was still turning. So great shot, the FD3. And I was calling this thing an eagle all day yesterday. What a klutz. This is a Draco. And Calvin has... This is ripped up there high on the hill. Oh, wow. Moving down, though, and that's going to be in circle one. That was a good shot. I was starting to think he may have pulled it over the fence and just hyzered in time, leaving him just inside the circle for the birdie. And off the top, and he's really going to need to turn that putting around from round three and a couple of metal hits so far, but nothing in. Eagle is in for the birdie, so he's going to take, he's going to open up a two-stroke lead on Calvin, but Drew's right there for the birdie, so looks like Calvin might be dropping down to third place. Cleans up the par. Yeah, disappointing to miss that one high, but it's still a solid drive. I mean, cleans up the par. N not time to panic yet, certainly. Great start from Drew. That's exactly what you want to see right there for the chasers. I think Beth and Drew off to that two for two start. And I don't know what it would take for Paul. I mean, we've seen him shoot minus 18, so it's mm -hmm. all on the table, but I got to think he needs 13, 14, something mm -hmm. like that to really contend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the wind is up, but it's not up enough to really cause 
you know, these guys in front of him to really melt down. I mean, maybe one guy has a bad round, but not all three. So yeah, it, it would definitely take something real special. Hole three, 360 feet, elevated basket. You've got your choice between big backhand hyzer or straight slash flex forehand. This hole, to me, just feels very similar to the last one. In yeah. Terms of what you, what well, kind of shape is going to have success? I don't know if Drew would have really liked that shot had it not hit the top edge of the little gully. But um, either way, he's going to be left with outside circle one to an elevated basket, obviously making things much more difficult. Paul going with the force, and that's skipping up nicely. Oh yeah, he's off to a good start. Remember one year, Macbeth and Felberg went like 44-45, and I don't remember which one scored which, but Paul, obviously, I mean, if anyone in the world is capable of it. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Eagle giving that a bid. I'm sorry, but I don't really want anyone else to get any skip aces into elevated baskets. Not this weekend. Do it another time. Let that me have make, this that one. That makes perfect sense. But he almost did it right there. And that was a color glow FD3. Calvin going with the destroyer. Really high. This has a good angle. Oh, nice shot. That's a great effort, too. And it just spiked down. Hold, please, on the right. Hold, please, on the right. Please, please. Drew, big test here. And he passes it. Flying colors. Great putt. All the pressure in the world there to keep pace with Paul. That's fantastic. Sometimes that's the part of the game that causes Drew the most trouble. He always has the distance. He always has the power to give himself the advantage. If he can clean it up on the green, he's going to be a powerful player to come for the rest of his career. And this week so far, he has been putting the disc in the basket. And Paul is in. And they are really not chasing much anymore. They are putting a hot stamp on this start. Good to see Calvin get on the board. Nice star frame from our lead group in the last round. $25 to charity for that one. Hole four, par three, 381, without a doubt, the trickiest of the opening five par threes. This one has OB all the way around the basket. It has one large tree center fairway that you have to avoid. The most common plays are really high wide hyzer for right-handed players. I think that's what we're gonna see from this group. But if you straighten it out at all, there's OB waiting for you on that right side. And if you're a little too safe with it, you could skip across the green and go OB on the left. Drew throwing the same PD2 that he threw in the last hole, and that is looking pretty dang good. Yeah, that's exactly how you want to do he it. He is Great zoned way. in right now. Paul throwing the onyx. That looks like it's going to get around. Not quite. That's close. I couldn't tell if it was had enough width or if it flipped up enough, but that is a very common mistake to see on this one. And what a time for the sport. I think we're, I think I'm seeing five cameras right there at the tee. Yeah. Tr trained mm -hmm. on the players. And that is pretty cool to see that much media coverage happening. A nice big crowd. Mm -hmm. We're, we're in the golden years. Don't, don't blink. You might miss them. A lot of these guys throwing the same disc they threw in the last hole, but oh. Calvin has hit the same tree Paul has, and I don't, I mean, from that distance, you're still running it because it's not, it's one of the few non-elevated baskets on this course. But they have a long way to go here. 
Oh, whoa. <laughs> Interesting. Only chuckling because it's just so rare to see something like that. And yeah. It could have been a little bit of a misrelease, but also the wind could have just pounded it. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna it, I'm gonna say wind. Yeah, I mean these you can see those little uh circle flags and the flags behind Eagle moving just a little bit. Nice Eagle birdie there from Eagle and kind of glossed over his fantastic drive as I was kind of getting enamored with all those media guys. But yeah. Congratulations to him. That was fantastic. Drew to stay perfect, and he's going to oh. test out that top shelf. Hi there. Way up high in the chains, but it sticks. And I got to say, after that Paige Pierce commercial, Paige Pierce threw three rounds. Are you kidding me right mm. now? Playing special. Perhaps the best tournament ever. It's it's just so freaking impressive. I, I mean, she would be right there in the mix with the fellas this week. I mean, in the top 20, top 10, something along those lines. I mean, she is absolutely on in fuego. I mean, we are witnessing some pretty special stuff. Hole five has a mandatory on each side of the fairway. So these guys are going to be going flat, mid-range, or putter. Drew going to putter here is throwing the Luna. And that is flat. Wow. This guy's looking for the perfect ground, I guess. I mean, you know what you got to do. Eagle throwing the link. Wow, late flipper. <laughs> and almost, that's an ace run. It's gonna require a little technical comeback putt. Obviously the putt, putts from distance for Eagle have not caused him too much trouble this week. Paul also going Luna. Heisering a bit left, a bit short. Should be good enough. I would think so. Calvin going AVRX3. I believe he likes to throw the DX version. Wow, still really overstable for him, and mm -hmm. that's going to be well outside the circle. And Calvin needs to start, and he's clean things up right now. It's a little sloppy. This is a scary angle too, because were you to airball this, mm -hmm. you're gonna go right behind that tree. This is a big putt. That is a huge statement. Wow. And might be the putt he needs to turn things around a little bit and getting the momentum on his side. Another and look at that perfect putt. Oh, just over the rim. And you know, to see something go in from distance on the elevated basket for, for Calvin. That's a huge thing to happen at this point in the round when Eagle is set up to potentially grab another stroke. And he is also in with a great putt. 40 under for Eagle McMahon. And that's early. I mean, we've got so many holes left. Last year, I believe he shot the course record to under par. The tournament record. The tournament, yes, the tournament record to par at 47 or 48 under. And he's got plenty of holes left to, to break that record if he continues his ways here. Drew to go five under through five. That'll work. That's the dream start out here at Vista. Mm, that is special. One back of the lead. <laughs> Absolutely filet mignon from Drew Gibson. And if you're sick of seeing these guys throw kind of half speed, get ready for some fireworks because we're on to the long one. Par four, 783. These guys can really open up here, go big turnover drive, go roller if they really want to get aggressive, 
elevated basket, OB on both sides and long. So this is a really, really tight green to try to approach into if your drive is not absolutely huge. Drew is throwing a old star SDS destroyer. He's going to go big Anheuser. Smush. Oh, boy. If that had flattened out and carried, he may have thrown it 783 feet. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even matter, though. That is so far. I think he's going to love that spot. Eagle, he's going PD2, just a safe 500 foot hyzer flick. Yeah, nice glide up at the top of the flight. Good angle from there, shouldn't be much in his way. Probably more like a 400 foot flick, but that puts him in good position. And Paul gonna go forehand. Big shot. Moving back to the middle of the fairway. That's exactly what he's looking for. Really, these guys could go that big shot that Drew threw off the tee, but they're playing this to the spots that they feel most comfortable with their approach, just like any good golfer in any version of golf that you play. You know, I'm somewhat surprised to see Paul not go back in turnover because it just bites off so much more distance, but we saw him go that Zeus Zeus play in the day before and it worked out well. Wow. Great drive. That's a huge destroyer. Probably approaching 500 feet. Once again, Paul going wide with a Zeus, but this is a oh. heavily turned over and catching trees. And is that going to be out of bounds? Oh, it is. And at the worst time, with everyone in the fairway in good position. Wow. Already trailing Eagle by five strokes. If Eagle gets this near the pin with his FD3, he could be taking another two. And oh, This is certainly going to be near the pin for a little while. How big is the skip? Oh, that could be out of bounds. It is. That OB line is pretty much wrapped around the circle's edge all the way around the green. And... Doorbell's open, or the door's open. Doorbell's ringing, maybe, for Drew and Calvin. And Eagle still with a putt to take a stroke from Paul. Yep. Even despite the OB, this needs to sit down. Wow, look at that action with the Firebird from Drew. That moved quite a bit off the to the edge. But he's in bounds. Calvin with the long drive. And I think this is a Firebird. I like this. This is nice and wide. The skip is just perfect. Yep. And that's what Calvin needs right now. He's he's looking to make up a lot of strokes. I believe that's probably Paul's zone. Yeah. And Calvin's close enough. He can actually see inside the basket. That's what you're looking for on these elevated baskets. Just reach your hand in and let go of it. Eagle to save par. Little bit low, and I, I found this to be a pretty windy section of the course. Mm -hmm. this, yeah, it really was. We have three holes right in this area, and it always seems to gather a lot of wind. And Drew is ah. unable to continue the perfection of this round, and so much action with that Firebird. And I wonder if that maybe played a little bit with his feelings about his approach. That looks so great for most of the flight, and just. Sometimes when you see that disc just roll further and further away from the pin, it just annoys you. And you get up to that green and you kind of resent that you're not closer. Yeah, and you yeah, you can get who knows what happened. I mean, clearly you could also just miss a putt, but yeah. That can be a tricky thing when you are kind of frustrated at when you should be focusing on the fact that you're still inside circle right. one. We've all made that mistake. Calvin making no mistakes here, and taking the only birdie on the hole, moving to minus three despite a little bit of a slow start. And right, and there you go. Three horse race once again. One stroke separating those three players at the top. 
Hole seven, par four, 645, most likely playing into a headwind, which is notable because you really wanna stay on the right side of the fairway here. So to make that negotiation of that last mandatory tree, which you must pass right of a little bit easier. The headwind is a problem because as you try to get out on that right side with your distance driver, you flip that thing up, you're bringing the path, the light poles and the trees and the water yeah. into play. Yeah, and those trees hang over the walking path quite a way. So you really want to keep it on the right side, but to right, like you said, oh, really the, becomes. This one is just hammered. Yeah, that's no danger. This is going for the All path. the way up to the walking path. It, I mean, you really can't really walk up to the fairway and place it in a more realistic yeah. and perfect spot. Probably just go ahead and pop up a green birdie number there. That is so good. Yeah, that's, you can't mess it up from there almost. Drew going PD2. This is a little scary, I think. I like it though, that stability, the PD2s, he can. <laughs> you see it, it just <laughs> missed those poles. <laughs> Never a doubt, Nate. Sca Never a doubt. I didn't say it was bad, I just said it was scary. <laughs> and we got a cloud breaker. Eagle maybe looking to break some. Oh, there's no clouds out. It's, it's this is going right. Uh oh. What? This oh. needs to get very lucky. Oh. Uh... Really? What? No way. That was so lucky. There's zero percent chance that can happen. How did that just occur? There's zero point zero 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 one percent chance that comes back and bounds. I'm eager to see where that disc is. I couldn't see through the spectators. As Paul throws a textbook shot here. That went <laughs> okay. over the water and then faded back under the trees, over the path, past the light pole somehow, inbounds through the spectators as well. I mean, that could have been a situation where a human body could have kept him OB. <laughs> that was the uh, the gallery breaker from, from Eagle, the new disc from Dismania. And that is a nice approach from Paul. Looking to get freaky there with the zone. Here's the Druna Luna. Skips out to a very similar position. And I don't even know where this is. It's well in bounds though. I'm struggling to locate where he is either. <laughs> Eagle That's skipping. a little bit errant yeah. all the way out Certainly to was. Circle's Edge, I think. Calvin Strive. Oh my goodness. Hard to even throw it that short when you're actually swinging your arm from, from that distance. You're outside putting range, but you don't, it's like hard to check up. <laughs> I think I'd take it every time though. You know? uh, I'm not complaining. I wouldn't complain with it. No, complain about it. Great putt. That is a birdie you're not going to see many times with that drive. I mean, taking advantage of an opportunity. Eagle McMahon strikes the putt. I know I've said it before, but I, l I love thinking about it that way. When I get lucky, it's like, well, you better execute this shot. Otherwise, that was for no reason. Yeah. You got to take what the course will give you. And Eagle does a great job of that. Ooh. And Drew's going to have a longer putt for par than he did for birdie. What a clutch up putt, Drew. Wow. On his most errant putting mistake so far that we've seen. Yeah, all tournament. Mm hmm. Capitalizing on the opportunity to save the par. Here's Macbeth for birdie. And he falls out. My goodness. And I think it's, it is early. But I think time's running out mm. for the McBeast. If, if if you're not making those, it's it's go time for sure. Yeah, that, I mean, it's it's tough to imagine a scenario where he can bring himself back in, where he would have a chance in those final couple of holes. But 
you know, I'm not counting him out. No. Hole eight, par three, 360 feet downhill over the water. Island green here. Every All the cement around the edges delineates that inbounds area. So we're going to see guys go straight putter or mid-range, perhaps even a forehand. Just get over the water and get down quick before you go gliding out over one of those OB lines. AVR X3. Calvin, that thing has got so much stability. Yeah, that's the second time that he's thrown that thing expecting straight and got nothing even close to straight out of it. So he called sit down though, and that's an important reminder to our audience at home. Talk to your discs. Absolutely. If you're not going to do it, I mean, I will if I'm there because I'm a nice guy. But other than that, you can't really count on many people. Here is that forehand play from Eagle. High, wide. Wow. This should dig right next to the basket. Yeah. And it's a little sketchy playing that high wide sidearm because if you hit the outside edge of that tree and drop down, you could fall in the water. You can also leave yourself well short on a pretty open, wide open if you're throwing straight at it. Fairway. This Drew. is turning over pretty severely. Slow down, Drew. Unable to put the brakes on the Luna as it slides across the walking path. He will be out of bounds, putting from probably outside the circle for his par. Macbeth making the adjustment with the same disc. Oh, yeah. See that one more time. Very straight, very low. Just commit to his power, and really nothing can go wrong with that shot. A thing of perfection for Macbeth. Drew first up, so he is certainly outside the circle because we know Calvin is sitting up nearly 45 feet. Mm. That'll be the first blemish of the round for Drew if you don't count the missed birdie opportunity on the prior hole. Calvin needing this one from 48 feet. Wow! Yes! And look at this little stretch now for Calvin. He has four of the last four. Here comes Vinny. Beautiful putt. And that's vintage round two action from Calvin way outside the circle, sending it up there and letting the KC AVR land in the chains. Eagle maintaining that one stroke lead and Drew's gonna drop a little bit off the pace now. Losing two strokes. And look at this front nine for Eagle McMahon, just that one blemish on hole six, but he is just getting Almost all birdies. I mean, doing exactly what you have to do as the overnight leader in this event. And we're going to see Paul tap in here, and let's check in with Paul Ulibarri for our hole breakdown. Paul Ulibarri here with another hole breakdown. As you can see from the coverage, the last eight holes are coming in as more of a birdie or die type of situation. Then you come into hole nine, and the personality completely changes. Measuring in at 482 feet, this is the hardest par three that we'll probably play all year. Let's go check out our options. I'm here with option one. It's just a casual hyzer over the trees into this landing zone, but it doesn't get that easy from here. As you can see behind me, that basket is about 15 feet from the water, so you're gonna have to throw a delicate little anhyzer that kind of lands in soft or a sidearm around that tree. I'm standing here at option two. If you do decide to get aggressive, this is as good as it's gonna get. With OB deep and OB left, all of a sudden you find yourself in a high risk, high reward situation. How bad do you want the birdie? Let's see how it plays out. Thanks a lot, Yuli, I'm loving those. And I really think these are some option two type players. I expect to see all of these guys get aggressive here. 
Calvin is certainly leading the way here with the destroyer. That's certainly high enough. Wow. Turned no. over enough. Now, can it hyzer back enough? Uh, yeah, I think it can. What a monster. Macbeth giving up some love there. You like seeing that between competitors. Appreciating great shots and anything in inside circle two is a phenomenal shot. 482 <laughs> over the water. Uh, Eagle, I... He played that a little safer than I thought he might. He has the distance to get there. and I mean, maybe not all the way to the pin, but on that safe hyzer line, I know he can get inside circle two regularly. A little surprised to see. It almost seemed like he was going for damage control and maybe just relying on a game plan that will help him through the rest of the round. Macbeth getting low. That needs lift, and it does right there. This over is going the tree. left early. Needs to come down quick. Oh, oh even shot. better than Calvin's. Oh, you just don't see two of those on one card. And Drew's going for this with a buzz, of course. That isn't even real. Going straight. Add it with a mid 42, everyone. Just as a reminder. That what that had it. Yeah, it had more. That still kinda has it. That had He's, more. He that actually may be closer now that it hit that tree and landed 35 short. Unbelievable. <laughs> he is an animal. What arm store did he get that thing from? The bionic arm store. I tried it was I out of my price range. Drew, can he connect on this outside the circle? Could we see three twos on the whole nine? What a putt. And you're 100% wow. right. That thing was going wow. outside circle long. Wow. I think without that tree. That I'm shaking. I'm shaking to my core after mm. seeing that. <laughs> that was insane. That has got to be one of the the first ever, at least the, the maybe no more than three all-time birdies with this, with a mid-range, ever. Maybe not even ever one, maybe just one ever, right there. <laughs> I mean, who even thinks like, oh, I'm just gonna throw a, a at, speed six. Look at Paul just coming up, mere feet from the water, perfect drive. I mean, I know we got a three on this, but can we just donate money to charity because how awesome this hole was played? I mean, you definitely can. I might. Only, uh, let's see here. Seven birdies on the round on that one and three of them right there on our card. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> you disc live, leaderboard check-in. Let's take a look. Calvin and Eagle tied at the top after Eagle plays safe on the ninth. Drew right there. Vino Macula out of Finland moving even with Macbeth. At 36. And watch out, Macbeth. There's Garrett Gerthy and Jeremy Colling right behind you. Thank you guys so much for watching our front nine coverage. It's time for our Grip6 giveaway. Head on over to grip6.com slash Jomez. You can see all the rules, how to enter there, and enter to win our Grip6 prize pack. We got a great battle, three players within two strokes. Make sure you check out the back nine. Thank you so much for the Jomez Pro Founders Club. Your support allows this awesome coverage to continue. We'll see you guys soon.